Good afternoon, folks. If you're in Liberia, good evening to you. I'm Henry Costa. Oh, and um, a few hours ago, I promised you this live video. So um, I've got to do it. Um, even though since I did a post on Facebook uh, about me going live, I did a post and then I went to bed and then I woke up and I realized that there's been a development, a positive development about the central theme or subject of my, of my post, you know, um, so I, 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 I'm very glad about that. Uh, so, but I still felt that I needed to do this video in order to just say where I was coming from and why I am very, very concerned about the state of affairs in the CPP as you all are. And uh, as we very well should be, uh, there is so much at stake, uh, so much at stake. Um, our lives are at stake. And uh, we have all risk, though not equally, but we have all risk so much uh, for this process to succeed. Therefore, uh, we cannot. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... Um, very good to be on. Yeah. Um, as you, as you know. We have this practice where we like the views to reach a certain number before we really begin to say what we want to say. Um, <clears throat> it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Delaware. It's getting cold. Very, very cold. Um, I like the cold though. There are some people who complain about the cold, but I, I don't. I don't really complain. Last year, we didn't get any snow yet at all. I had to go to Minnesota before I saw any snow, but it was pretty cold. I like the cold. I don't complain at all about the cold. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, it's a Saturday, Saturday, Saturday afternoon in the US and evening in, Li in Liberia. So a lot of people are having a fun time. So many people are not here to watch, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about what I want to talk about. Let on people watch the video. Uh, first thing first, you know, very first thing. Are you looking to send money to Liberia from America? Look no further. You have a very affordable, very, very fast, effective way of sending money to Liberia uh, at a very, very, very tiny fee or rate. And uh, it's very effective. SendWave, uh, you can download the app. For now, it only works. Um, it only works for the U.S. from the U.S. to like to like to Liberia and to other countries. And to get five dollars free credit uh, for your first transfer, all you need to do is just enter the promo code Costa, or C O S T A. SendWave is an American uh, money remittance company. They're based in the, in the United States in Delaware, as a matter of fact. So and yeah, uh, they've been in business for many years now, since 20, 2014. And uh, they're in several countries, in Ghana and Tanzania and Nigeria, Kenya, and a couple other places. Very reliable. So that's the way to send money now. I've used it. I mean, it's so convenient. It takes 30 seconds for the money to hit the person's account. Yesterday, I just went off sending money to my friends. Oh, go buy a beer. Go do that one. All right. Now. A um, couple of things before I really get to the mean part. Why? Well, what I want to talk, talk about now, as some of you may have heard, the government of Liberia has decided to reinstitute, to reindict uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Wamplu. Now, isn't that crazy? That is extremely crazy. The government, the same government that did not want to prosecute Wamplu for whatever reasons. They allowed Wamplu to exploit the legal loophole to file before the court requesting the judge to dismiss the case against him because 
the government through the Ministry of Justice had failed to pursue the case in two consecutive terms of court. That's the law. When you charge someone, the law says you must prosecute that person within two terms of court. You cannot, you cannot fail to bring that person to court within two terms of court. So all Wampalu did, he went to court and he told the judge, he wanted the judge to drop the case. The judge dropped the case. Because the state did not want to prosecute. And the reason the state did not want to prosecute is very, very simple. The state, state actors are involved. One Blue did not act on his own. He did not. So they know very, very well. So they know what they were doing. And that is why. So now, because the American Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has brought sanctions against One Blue and his immediate family, so the state has decided this is embarrassing. We're going to have to reindict and re-prosecute. Well, I mean, they, 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 they didn't even prosecute in the first place, but now they're going ahead to do it now. So that is exactly what happened with the Andrew Wampolo case. It is ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. It's a safe face effort. Safe face fiasco. This shouldn't have happened in the very first place. The government should have prosecuted Andrew Wampolo to send a very clear message that it would not tolerate this level of embarrassment, this kind of corruption where this guy sells our passports to foreigners, possibly uh, narco terrorists and possibly other terrorists and who do terrible things and who would present Liberian passports and carry themselves as Liberian citizens and do things that could really hamper the country's image. It shouldn't have happened. But of course, this is the government of a bunch of corrupt people, so it shouldn't surprise you at all that it would do this. Now, uh, one of my boys, one of our soldiers, one of, one, of, one, of, one of our people celebrates his birthday today. Michael Vani, shout out to you. Happy birthday to you as you celebrate your birthday today. Uh, okay, so there's another issue I want to talk about before I go on to the primary issue. So why am I doing this video? This morning, my time, US time, Delaware time, I did a post on Facebook in which I said that I was going to go back on my earlier promise to not speak to the issue, the crisis that grew out of the Nimba County primary, CPP primary. I said, because a stalemate had, had happened as a result of that. Now, I needed to no longer be silent on the matter. I felt I needed to speak. And the very reason why I decided to be silent in the first place, the first time, was because I did not want to cause further troubles. Now, many of you are aware that initially I endorsed Madam Edith Gonglo Wen. I mean, before she even got on the ground in Liberia to even begin to work, I endorsed Edith Gonglo Wen. And the reason I did endorse her is simple. She's tried, tested, experienced, and she's, and I like the gonglos. I have an affinity for the gonglos, period. I like Taiwan Gonglo. I think he's one of the, one of the, he's, he's, he's a Liberian model. I mean, I like the gonglos. They, their family has something about it. So I, 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 I hold deep affinity, deep affinity for the gonglos. And so I didn't hide it. I told you, you know, uh, Taiwan Gongula is one of my favorite human beings alive. I mean, it's simple. I mean, and his sister, she's a great person too. And the other Gongulas, they are all very nice people. But so I like the Gongulas, period, kaput. I mean, that's my right. So I chose to support Madame Gonglo Wei. Now, Taiwan Wei is a friend, or at least before we had our disagreements, he and I were very cool. Ty, Ty one way. And Ty is a nice guy. You know, like all of us, we have our issues, but Ty is a nice guy. And Ty is my friend. So then we, then polit politics kicked in, you know, and there were issues with me and the ANC folks and Ty one way being close to Alexander Cummings. So collateral damage. Our relationship became affected by the, uh, the, the Rickman rule and the infighting and all that unnecessary political bloodletting. It kind of it, it kind of affected our relationship. Other than that, Taiwan and I never had any personal issues. 
It was purely political. My endorsement of Edith Gumbel Ware was in no way a statement that Ta Wongwe is not a good person or would not make a good senator. No, not at all. That was not the issue. Then a few months ago, uh, one of our mutual friends, Brother Benjamin Sanvi, decided that enough, enough was enough and he needed to help mend fences between Ta Wongwe and myself. When Ben reached out to me, of course, I accepted. And Ta Wongwe accepted. And we made friends, we kissed, and we all moved on. I mean, I'm sure you all, many of you can bear witness to that. And it was a beautiful thing. We made friends, we were cool. That was even before Mr. Cummings became chair of the CPP. And Cummings himself, you know, they would reach out and we'll make friends and we'll be cool and everything is fine. Hail Mary. Uh, so since that time, since I made friends with Ta, or we mended our issues and were cool again, I decided that out of consideration for the mending of fences between Ta and myself, I would stay quiet in the Nimba County CPP process. That's the decision I made. That didn't mean I stopped talking to Edith. It didn't mean I no longer supported Edith. No. All that it meant was that I decided I would remain quiet because, you know, now I had made friends with Tar. I was still supporting Edith, but I would just remain quiet. That was my thing. Whoever emerges from the process in Nimba, I would eventually support that person on the CPP ticket. I would support Tar the same way as I would support Edith if he emerged winner of the primary in Nimba. That was the decision I reached. So I kept quiet. Many of you may have noticed that. Now, that didn't mean I withdrew my support from Edith because I did not. To say that would be a lie. Now, they went to the primary process. And according to the process, I was not there. Three of the political parties voted. ALP, UP, UP and Liberty Party all voted for Edith. That's 75% of the votes. And the ANC represents the other 25% of the votes. But the ANC, to which Ta Wongwe uh, belongs, decided to pull out at the 11th hour. Violence ensued. We all watched that. It was terribly embarrassing. These are things we condemn CDC for. For us to be doing that, we who consider ourselves civilized, intelligent, mature people, it was very, very embarrassing. So when that happened, what did I do? I decided I would not speak to the matter publicly. I was making calls. I was getting briefed by people who were there. As a matter of fact, one of my people, COP guys, was one of the, uh, he was, if not, uh, if, uh, if, if I'm mistaken, he was a chair of the, the primary uh, convention of the primary election committee. So I was getting first-hand briefing about what happened in NIMBA. So I felt the issue would be resolved. That's what I felt. Uh, but unfortunately, it did not appear that the issue would be involved. I mean, would be resolved anytime soon. Of course, then na naturally, I began to get concerned, as many of you equally were. So what happened? The three political parties a few days ago decided after the CPP had said they would they all condemn the violence in Nimba and the blame shifting here and there. This person said, I don't want to go into that right now. As the who sparked the violence, who didn't spark the violence. I don't want to go into that right now. All I want to say is that, of course, you all know what happened. People were condemning the violence. Nobody wanted to take ownership of the violence. And in the end, three of the parties said they stood by the result from the primary that Edith was the candidate. Uh, ANC immediately reacted by issuing a statement in which they said that they were still rejecting the results of the primary. And that was a point yesterday that I got really, really concerned and I got really pissed. I said, what? Well, these people, let me say this to you, and I say this to you all, all the time. And I'm glad the issue is resolved. But listen, these people, I'm not in this thing here for Ben and I, Yuri. I'm not in it for Cummings. 
I'm not in it for Boaca. Neither am I in it for Yombly. I'm not. I'm in this thing for a better Liberian. I don't, I don't. Let me tell you something. I don't care about any one of their individual presidential aspirations or whatever. No, that is not what I mean for. And I keep telling, telling, telling y'all. And we are making tremendous sacrifices and contributions. It is some of them who will become president, not me. It is not, I'm not one of the four pres uh, uh, persons trying to be president. I'm not. So they want to be president. Some of us are putting, making our own investments. We are making tremendous contributions to this effort. Therefore, it is not an issue that only Cummings and Yuri and Boakai and Young Blee to go sit at the table to discuss. I am a major stakeholder in this process by my contribution to this process, by the risks and investments that I make personally to this process. So it is not up to Yuri or Cummings or Boakai to decide what happens. I sit down there and I let them decide whatever they want to decide. It does not work that way for Henry Costa. Perhaps it works that way for other people in the CPP, but not that way for me. Because I know my worth. I know what I bring to the table. I know the sacrifices and the contributions I make. I know that it is because of this opposition struggle, I lost my radio station. I know so many things I have gone through, getting chased out of the country and all that kind of stuff because of the opposition struggle. So, <laughs> I will not sit there and say, let the puppet then decide whatever they want to do. No, it is not about them. It is not about them. We're not doing this thing for Cummings, for Yuri, for Boaca. I, I don't care about their presidential aspirations. I do not care. I only care about bringing in a decent gov 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 government that hopefully changes the narrative of this country. Period. That's what I care about. For me, I'm not fascinated with anybody's aspiration to be president. I care about a better Liberia. That's why I support the CPP. Simple, plain and simple. That's why I have personally made all the sacrifices and the contributions that I have made. So, when I see that the contributions that we are making, the sacrifices that we are making, that they could be undermined or they have been undermined or jeopardized, then I am concerned, as you all should be. Therefore, I decided, you know what? If they can get the house in order, I'm going to go on, go public and blast them. That's what I decided to do. That I was going to go public and blast them. Blast all of them. But... I did the post that I will come on Facebook and I will blast them. I went to bed. I woke up a few hours later. I see that the ANC had issued a statement saying they were dropping their, they were withdrawing their contention and they were going to accept Edith Gongro Ware as the candidate to represent the CPP in Nimba County. Now, mind you, the candidate registration process ends in, I mean, on Monday. Monday is a deadline. It ends on Monday. So when I woke up, and I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit there and say it was my post that made this the Mr. Cummings change his mind. I'm not going to say that. I'm not gonna flatter myself to say that. It may not have been my post, but I do not care. What I care about is that Mr. Cummings has made a decision that they will go forward. Mind you, Mr. Cummings is the chair of the CPP. He carries a lot rides on his decisions yet. And so I want to say yet, whether or not it was my post that made Mr. Cummings change his mind in a few hours after I did my post, does not matter. What matters here is that Mr. Cummings and the CPP leaders, all of them, they have done the right thing. That is it. What matters here is that Mr. Cummings and all of them have done the right thing. Because guess, guess what? We were on the risk of losing out on placing a candidate in the second largest county in the country. Imagine how embarrassing that would have been. It would have been terribly embarrassing had we forfeited on placing a candidate or fielding a candidate in NIMBA because the CPP could not get their act together. Hmm? Yeah, that is exactly what would have happened. And I said to myself, no, 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 no. We're not going to get that kind of embarrassment that I will be defending and people will be asking me questions, oh, Costa, and why are you can get an act together? Why I didn't put up a candidate in Nimba? No, I was not going to allow myself to be quiet for such an embarrassment to happen. So I was going to speak out. But 
now this video is not about blasting them anymore because they have gotten their act together. Let me tell you what I was going to do. This is what I was going to do. If the ANC had not issued that statement saying that they had resolved the issue, Chairman Cummings, he's the chair. He's the chair of the CPP. I support him. I work with him. If they had not resolved that issue, I, Henry Pedro Costa, was going to suspend my support for CPP until they resolve it. That's what I was going to, going to, going to do. That is what I was going to announce. I was going to suspend my support for the entire CPP until the situation is, re is resolved. That is exactly what I was going to do. But now I don't have to do that anymore because Mr. Cummings, the chair of the CPP, has made a magnanimous decision and he says he's going to submit Edith Gonglo to the National Elections Commission as the candidate representing the CPP in the account. So I want to say to Mr. Cummings, I want to thank you for the magnanimity in your uh, statement issued a short while ago. I want to urge you and I want to say this to you. This is not about you. I don't particularly care about any one of you being president. Hello? Can I repeat myself? Let me make myself clear. My, my, I don't particularly care about Cummings being president. I don't particularly care about you being president. I don't particularly care about Boaka being president. I don't. All I care about is a better Liberia, period. Simple. And if the CPP holds together, stays together, and we put a ticket together that we also put, I believe we have a shot to begin that process. Period. That's it. So for me, it's not about any particular person. So I want to say, I'm glad that they finally made a decision to move forward and Nima County will not go uncontested for by the CPP. That's all. Now, to my brother, Ta Wongwe. Ta Wongwe, as I said, um, Ta Wongwe is like me in some ways. Not many ways, but one or two ways. He, he can be misunderstood. Uh, and, 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 you know, like many people misunderstand me, but Ty is not a bad guy. Ty is a nice guy. He's actually a nice guy. And, and I want to say this to Ty. Uh, Ty, you are a young man. Uh, this was your first try in politics. And, uh, I, I, I understand you must be feeling very bad, but I want to say this to you. My word of caution to you is uh, do not let anybody encourage you to run independent. Do not run independent. I am told there are some people close to you who are telling you that you should run independent in Nimba. Uh, it would not be good for you at all. You are a young man like myself. You're only a few years uh, my senior uh, uh, by age and you have done ex very well for yourself, extraordinarily well. Uh, folks, for those of you who do not know Tao Wangwe, Tao Wangwe is a very successful businessman. His company, the Kana Group, which is about 11, 12 years old, he and I have talked about this on the show several times, uh, does a lot of professional research and development studies and, and all that kind of stuff across Af Africa and several countries around, around the world. Tao is very successful. He built a very successful business. And uh, the future is bright, Tao. You could decide in 2023 to ingratiate yourself with the CPP now for being magnanimous, to just let this thing slide. Uh, and you can definitely make a run for a representative seat to represent the people in Nimba County in 2023. It would not be a bad thing at all. So that is my appeal to a friend, to Ta Wongwe. And in fact, it would make you look good if you were to reach out to uh, and work with Edith. Con con congratulate her since she's now been uh, endorsed by the entirety of the CPP, including your own party. Work with Edith, uh, with, with Edith in Nimba. Hopefully when Edith wins the election in Nimba, it will not be a difficult thing for you to run for a representative seat in Nimba. And, 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 and that is what I think. That's, what I, uh, that's my advice that I want to offer you as a friend publicly, uh, that Ta Wangwe do not agree do not listen to any advice by anyone telling you to run independent. Do not run independent. Run in 2023. 
there will be openings for representative, for senator in 2020 23. You can decide to run again. But this time, uh, the three parties voted and Edith Gonglu well came on top. And it doesn't mean that you are rejected. It just means that for now, this is the way the parties feel. And so that's my advice to you. Um, to the CPP leaders, to every one of them, including Ben and Ayuri, my political leader, including Joe Baca, my own old man, including Mr. Cummins, the current chair, including Yumbly, the wife of my dear fallen friend Adolf. I just want to say to you all, this thing ain't iron, boy, yo. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, that was on my name and say I frisky. I'm frisky because I tell you the truth, because my future may be tied, we may be inextricably tied together, politically speaking, but you don't get to decide what my future looks like. We are not, I'm not in this business where you're so that when you're getting, when you're winning, there, I can get a job. That's not what I want. I don't want that. I want a better Liberia. That is what I want. I want to say this. Next time you have a problem, as there always will be issues, inter-party issues, please endeavor to resolve those issues in-house to avoid them spilling out into the public as this situation did. It is embarrassing. The situation in Nimba where people were throwing stones, whoever did that, I'm not even going to go into who did it, who didn't do it, resolve it, in, uh, ensure that those situations, those things do not happen because it is not good. We tell ourselves, we tell our supporters that we're better than seditions. You understand? You understand? That's what we say, we say, we say to them. But guess, guess what? Uh, it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing that we had us in, 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 in Nimba. And, and, and some of us who, whether we like it or not, we speak for the CPP, uh, we speak for the opposition community. And people ask us these questions. What are you saying about this? And you know, and, and it is just embarrassing. And I want to say this to you all. So the people who support Mr. Cummings. I know some of some of you may never like me. I don't give a damn that you don't like me. I just want to say this. I see all the nonsense you people write on Facebook. Uh, you ANC people be attacking me, insulting me. I don't really care. I don't care what you think because where I am, most of you would never be there in the political, uh, in the in the grand scheme of things politically. Where I am, the level I am in Liberian politics. Most of you, or perhaps all of you, will never get to that point, politically speaking. It is possible. So you'll be on Facebook, you'll be attacking me, you'll be saying whatever you're saying. Your views are not important to me because the voice I have, you will never have it, period. Kaput, nothing. And I want to say this to y'all. No matter how I, how, what, how I say about me, how much y'all cost me, how much y'all say what, I will never take it out on Alex's comments. Let me repeat myself. No matter what you all, you minions, you insignificant, irrelevant minions of the ANC, what you write about me on Facebook, no matter what you say, no matter how nasty you think you are toward me, I will never take it out on Alex Cummings. You understand me? As far as I'm concerned, you can say whatever, but Alex Cummings and myself have got no issues whatsoever. So y'all be cussing. Y'all be talking nonsense. Mr. Cummings and I, we have got no issues whatsoever because you know you are not even relevant. Mr. Cummings knows who's rele relevant. He knows that you're not relevant, but he knows what, what, what Costa is. So my issue is, my issue is this. Say what you want to say, write what you want to say, that your damn business. But it, it doesn't move me because I am at the level where you might never be in Liberian politics. You might be successful in many other things you do, yes, but... In politics in Liberia, right now when we speak, you're nothing compared to Costa. Hello, may I repeat myself? Most of you, all of you combined together, you're not nothing. You're not, you're, you're, you're not read my baby too. Hello, all of you can be talking noise. You are nothing compared to Henry Costa in Liberian politics. I enter Liberia right now, the whole town will be shaking. Right now, you're not nothing. So because of that, me and Mr. Cummings will not be in problem because of y'all. You okay? I saw one of them. Somebody sent me a post. One of them, one of the AS people wrote how the boys that resigned from the COP and went and joined the, the, the CDC for small money the government gave them. I saw someone there trying to accuse me and say, yeah, the how their master can behave. When have I left to go rejoin CDC that you want to compare uh, those boys with me? People that I made, I made those boys, period. Whether you like it or not. Nobody knew Ben Topa before he, he came to the level. We, ele we, we elevated them. All the boys, they are still, they are still my boys. I feel sorry for them. I feel pity for them. 
You, you understand? Because they are young, they are, they are misguided, and these things happen. They will learn. They will learn. So you can say what you want to say. But yeah, guess what? Eh? Manko, Paco, you will never be aware Heron Costa is. I'm internationally recognized. They write about me all over the world. Uh, this that they have gotten recognition from uh, uh, reputed publications. Y'all sit down and you go going look for your equal. And now you're equal. I'm too far from y'all. You understand me? And Mr. Cummings knows his interest. He knows. That's why when he became chairman of CPP, he reached out to Henry Costa to make peace. And it was a good thing on Mr. Cummings' part. And I decided, as long as this man and I are working together, y'all will not be able to make me come make plow with Cummings. So you are sit down there with your useless, insignificant selves. Why Henry Pedro Costa will sit here on the biggest, the biggest voice in the country, whether you like it, you're not like it. Every day, Tobia took me from radio. I still have 60, 70,000 human beings listening to me. What it? 60, 70,000. Who can you like broke against 60, 70,000 human beings listening to them every day? We're not on the same level. Don't bring that nonsense to me. Y'all go look for your equal. We're not on the same level. We are not, I took plenty of years to get here. Some of y'all, 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 get a defeat day. You think you can just get out and come to my level? You think that high can happen? You know how many sacrifices I've made to reach to the level? You know what it took? What God put uh, put me through? And, and where, where, what I went through to arrive to that point? Y'all don't be that nonsense. Y'all go look for equal then. I'm Henry Costa. Without trying to praise myself, I'm one of the most recognized Liberian inside and outside the country. Hello? Let me repeat myself. I'm Henry Costa. I'm one of the most recognized Liberians inside Liberia and outside Liberia. We your thing we equal? Huh? <laughs> we not. So Alex Cummings and I, no issue. No. He ain't do nothing to me. I support him as chair of the CPP fully, no doubt. My only issue was the entirety of the CPP, the decisions they make. No personal issue with Mr. Cummings. So, y'all can go, y'all can jump up on the moon, jump down, do whatever your big calo, 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 pay that your business. But we're not on the same level. Everybody get level. My level don't change long time. We're not on the same level. You cannot talk Liberian politics today without mentioning the name Henry Pedro Costa. It is not possible. You cannot talk Liberian politics inside and outside Liberia without mentioning Costa. I can be saying I'm sneezing. <laughs> Congressman, they be talking about me. President, they ain't other crumbs, they be talking about me. What kind of people in this room? Y'all think we equal? You think we all we are equal? <laughs> let me uh, let me tell you a little, little joke, right? So many many years ago, when I was growing up in Rawville, uh, <laughs> so my brother Ivan Jones, my man, I'm cooking the, the fried rice tomorrow, bringing it to the baby shower. My brother W. Ivan Jones, uh, man, having a baby shower tomorrow. I'm making fried rice. I'm I'm making fried rice to carry to the things of more. I, I promised my sister Anna had winning fry, since Musu, all of y'all that I'm making the fried rice. The fried rice, I carry the fried rice tomorrow. <laughs> winning fry, don't say I carry the fried rice tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go buy the thing. There's so money, I cook the fried rice. I bring the fried rice. So let me tell you a little joke before, before I go. And by the way, all in all, CPP, strong. Hello, may I repeat myself? CPP is strong. We will do all that we can, sometimes even if necessary, to publicly chastise our, our leaders. We will. But at the end of the day, we'll stay together. So we're not going nowhere. We'll stay here together. My father, David, my dear brother, how do you, how do you do? You know, they say pele people stupid, Mike. You know, Mike, the like half and half. Mike, the kissy pele. They say pele people stupid, but you know what I mean? They all are pele men. They all are pele, pele noon. Hmm? They want you not stupid. They, the stupid pelepo died during the war. They were walking all the stupid pelepo, all the way that born after the war. We're not, we're not stupid. I want to hear ha. They say, they say, they say, they say, they say that crew may get beat more. But now, now, they met with the bigger mob in Liberia, pele man. Yeah. <laughs> they met with the bigger mob. They're not crew man, you know. A crew man carry 10 pen in your pocket, blue pen, red pen, orange pen, yellow, yellow pen. 
I can get paid in my family, but when we open our own more they scared. Because the bazooka there and the house is far far more. But let me say this to you though. Let me tell you the little joke. So many years ago in Bro Broville, growing up with my uncle Jeremiah Walker, uh, we took a little vacation job. So we went somewhere, we we took a painting job. Some people in the community wanted to paint their homes. You know, so we took the job. Not just, you know, just when boys want to be boys, hang out with your friends and stuff, all that kind of stuff. So, we will cook. We want papi were working with us. We, all the, all the picking. So, the papi were working with us. We will cook the food. As he, as he yobo. I will talk about brother yobo here before I, before I go. I'm very, very impressed. Brother yobo has impressed me and has impressed a lot of other people. And I'm very, very impressed. I will talk about brother yobo. So, we will cook the food, we will do the painting, then we will take a break, we will cook. When we finish cooking, then all of us will eat together. Because we are all working together, right? That's the camaraderie, right? So we we'll cook the food, we are eating the food together. One of, one of my men, the papi was the oldest person in my heart. So while we are eating my men, I will just be putting him in front of the papi, taking the papi meat, the meat they not in front of the papi, you know what I mean? In the bowl, we'll put the food in the big bowl. He's taking the meat. The papi said, Front up! Papi, damn fella head. <laughs> because, the boy taking the meat from in front of him, he fat. But he now he now want to talk. The puppy, the, the puppy now want to talk. The now want to talk. So <laughs> somebody asked one of our men and said, ah, my man, but my man, how you taking the meat from in front of the puppy like that? So one of our men said, my man, but my man, how you taking the meat from in front of the puppy like that? Then the puppy said, no, let him eat it. That was grim, puppy. Let him eat it. Ain't thing we all we are equal. Let him eat the meat. <laughs> the meat won't eat. Let him eat it. Ain't 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 we all we are equal. <laughs> so now I can't tell. We all we are not equal. <laughs> so don't bring your friends get next to me. I'm Pedro. Eh? Don't bring it to me. <laughs> so, brother Mobake Yobo, our Secretary General, is doing a great job. And I want to say we are very proud of Brother Yobo. You know, Brother Mo Ali. Was the founding secretary general of the COP, one of the hardest working people in the COP. But it just got to a point where Mo was overwhelmed. He had too many things going, uh, UP things going, CPP things. Mo was overwhelmed with CPP business too much. That was the problem. But Mo was one of the hardest working people in the COP. When we founded the COP, all our meetings, at the time we had all those senator, representative, you know who's the chair of our meetings? The, pre the presiding officer at each of our meetings was Brother Mo Ali. Mo chaired the meetings. He recorded, he, he took minutes, he updated everyone, he ran after things. So Mo was one of the hardest working people. But, but then CPP work just overwhelmed Mo Ali. So Mo was just not able. I used to blast at Mo everyone. Remember Mo? We said we got the office. When you going to face the office? Mo would not be able to make it. <laughs> so that was the problem that we had. So Mo Ali said, my man, I understand. I am not available. Let me step aside and focus on other, other things. He became UP Secretary General. You all know how very excited we were and still are that our brother, our friend, our comrade, our fellow patriot, Mo Ali became Secretary General of the biggest party in the CPP, the Unity Party. Whether you like it or not, that is the truth. We're very happy. Then the decision was, who do we make the next Secretary General? The way COP works is based on consensus. Several people I'll pick up the phone and call first and bounce my ideas off of theirs to see what we come to. And sometimes they will agree with me right off the bat. Some, sometimes they will offer their counter suggestions and we'll, you know, we, we, we would, we would, Disagree to agree and ultimately we'll reach an agreement. That's what we would we, we, we would do. I'll pick up the phone, I will call Ben Sandy, Stephen Johnson, Mo Ali, and uh Brother Maurice Duplet, several of those people. I will call them. That's how we reach consensus before we go to meetings. And then once we reach a consensus, it's easy for us to uh make a decision in those meetings. That's, that's how the COP is run. Consensus, consensus building. So, Mo and I were talking, when Mo told me he wanted to step aside. And it was, I was glad to hear it because Mo was overwhelmed and he was running and he just couldn't make it. So,
So I said, well, Mo, I understand. But damn it, who will make the next SG? That was a question Mo asked me. I said, Mo, I think my response was made in less than 20, 30 seconds of Mo's point when he made. I said, Mo, I So Mo said, oh, yeah. Yoba would make a good Secretary General. And, Moses, and, 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 I, and I say, here is why. Moba Yoba is brilliant. Moba Yoba <clears throat> is a patriot. He ain't scared to talk. He can talk. He can criticize everybody. Everybody. Moba Yoba can criticize everybody, which is a good thing. Everybody. Yoba can criticize you. If, you. if he thinks you are wrong, he will tell you the truth. He's a patriot. He's a decent fella. Decent. He has integrity. Mobile Yoba were working the Maritime CDC government king. This man went abroad, studied, eh? studied, educated abroad, and in Liberia. So, I mean, you know, Mobile Yoba left the job. They told him Mobile Yoba more going to be drinking. The young man started his business, the Renaissance Group. Very industrious, industrious, hardworking, brilliant young man. And I said, Yoba. And Mo said, Yeah, Yoba. And I said, Okay, fine. I said, Mo, I have, have agreed on Yoba. Let me call Ben Sanvi. I call Ben. Ben said, yeah, your boy, yeah. I call Stephen Johnson. Stephen Johnson said, yeah, your boy, yeah. I call Dumoy. Dumoy said, yeah. You know, Dumoy too been very busy. Many in pocket, Dumoy was very active in the CPP until he began running for senator in Bonn, in Bonn County. To his credit, I can blast at him too for, for not being around, but he's running. I understand that. The same way more were busy, that had Dumoy were busy. So that problem we had. Luckily for all, Yoba runs his businesses, but Yoba structure his businesses in such a way that he gotta be there all day. And Yoba not running C C C P P like more Ali there. Yoba not running for position, so Yoba has he's able to manage his time to put time on the C O P. You see the you you see the decision. I know Yoba that self employed man. The man running his own business business businesses. The man calls a shot. So if we give Yoba this task, he will be able to. Do it. So before we told Yoba, I had to talk to my kiki man. Eh? You know, then we'll call a meeting. We'll call a meeting. We'll call a COP executive meeting. Everybody were there. We discuss it. But the marriage duke, everybody will say, okay, everybody agree. Yabba. The decision to bring mobile Yabba was unanimously endorsed by the entirety of the COP national leader leadership. Everybody endorsed it. So then now. Uh, of course, we already told Yoba that we were concerned. Oh, Delon. Oh, yeah. Delon was a 100% supporter. Yoba. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Delon was 100%. In fact, Delon attended a particular meeting that we discussed Yoba. Delon was 100% in support of Yoba. Just so you know. So, as chairman, I had to go now and officially inform Yoba. So, Yoba, we told Yoba. Yoba said, let me consult my madam. He okay, consult his wife. He consulted his wife. And uh, he told me, you know, and, and this is cool, and, and, and let me think about it. He thought about it for a while, and then he agreed. And we were excited. So when we made a decision now, we had to write, as chairman, I had to write, I had to write that, powerful, that powerful letter. <laughs> the chairman, the chairman is strong. So, <laughs> so I had to write that letter, you know. Uh, let me see what I got, brother. Yo, but brother, yo, but where is your letter, man? I like, your, I like your letter. I came down here in my office. I wrote the letter. And uh, appointing Brother Mobake Yobo as the, uh, because the appointment was made by the national leadership, not by Costa. The national leadership made the appointment. But as, as, as chairman, I had to now officially communicate to Brother Moba Yobo that he had now been named, you know, uh, uh, Secretary General of the COP, having been unanimously endorsed by the, by the, by the, by the. So that's what we did. So I told, I want to see Brother Moba Yobo letter. What my man, what my man letter? I want to read a letter. So yeah, hold on, let me read a letter. I let the way I wrote that letter. Yeah. So uh, we got, ha, this is a letter that I, I, that I wrote. They pen about no book. Yeah, they pen about, they, they pen about no, no book. All the people pen about that during the war. They, they, they want it down, they smart, they know both, they're more sharp. Nobody can eat over there, over there, over there. I know my people are like, hey, they're laughing the place. Hey, what's up, man? Okay, so there's a letter I wrote to Brother Moba K. Yobo. Moba K. Yobo Jr., CEO, the Renaissance Group, Painesville, Liberia, September 6, 2020. Dear Mr. Yobo, it is my pleasing duty. Hmm. So, when I read a letter, you must say, so. When I read one sentence, you must say, so. <laughs> 
the early way. Uh, dear Mr. Yobo, it is my pleasing duty as chairman to officially inform you that the national leadership of Liberia's leading advocacy movement, CESAO, the Council of Patriots, having discussed your nomination as was proffered by me, unanimously endorsed said nomination in a leadership meeting held on September 3, 2020, and duly appointed you as the Secretary General of the Council of Patriots. Your appointment takes immediate effect. You shall be duly apprised by your predecessor, Mr. Mo Ali. So, it should please you to know that we are excitedly looking forward to working with you in the people's struggle for social justice in Liberia. Your fervent sense of patriotism, your brilliance and deep appreciation of the woeful state of democratic governance in our beloved country made you the best fit for such a key position in our movement. So, you shall enjoy our fullest cooperation and support in the exercise of your duties as Secretary General. As Chairman, I am pleased, on behalf of the rank and file of our great movement, to wholeheartedly welcome you on board. Congratulations, and let's get to work for Liberia. Save the state. Yours truly, Henry Pedro Costa Senior, Chairman, Council of Patriots. Never <laughs> <better> from. So, <laughs> so that is the letter that I wrote here and sent to Brother Yobo, appointing him. And since Brother Yobo came, you know we had leased our office, the COB office, on the, the corner of uh, Kerry and Link Streets. Nice spot, but it needed some renovation. Again, Brother Mo Ali was too busy. Brother Yobo went. Working with our acting youth chair, uh, Samira Yima, went to J-Mart Furniture, got the quote, got the invoice. Uh, some, 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 Samira initially did the assessment, uh, but then they had to do a, an, uh, they had to update the assessment, and they went to J-Mart, got the assessment, came back, fixed up the office very nicely. The ball like good things. The ball likes to look good. You see the man office. You have the man after after the president bringing cool cool beer. So that is how the your due money. That's how it goes. We we've furnished our office. It's got twenty four hour uh, internet. It's got nice furni furnishing. COP can host meetings in there. Uh, it's got air conditioning. Everything is there. Very nice. I strongly would say very very nice. It's, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful, very beautiful office. So uh, that's where the due money goes. I just spoke to. The gentleman who shipped our computers on his cantina, uh, Brother Seth Wilson, he's in Liberia. Uh, Brother Wilson just told me that in two weeks' time, the cantina will be in Liberia with the computers that we sent. And uh, our Secretary General, Brother, Brother Yagwa, is going to receive those containers. Brother Yagwa, uh, Seth Wilson said he has not heard from you. I'll give you his number. You need to place a call to him Monday. So I just want to say, as chairman, I am very proud uh, of the decision we made as a body to appoint Brother Yogbo as our Secretary General. It was no mistake. He has impressed us. And I have no doubt that he will help see us uh, become a stronger, more structured, more professionalized organization. And as far as our uh, uh, other efforts are concerned, like we're going to take that matter to the courts where we wrote uh, the GAC requesting that the GAC should give us uh, George Weah's assets. And the GAC said they will not give us those assets unless we get... Uh, yes, we have two internet uh, service prov prov providers. That is correct, Brother, brother Yob. But 24-hour internet service, air conditioning, everything. Our office is nice. Thanks to you. Not only like $10, $20, $15, that you can pay in due. That's where it goes. You know? And when the computers get to Liberia in two weeks, we're going to build a computer school, free computer school. Some COP members will come and volunteer teaching services, instructional services. That's what the COP is about. Then we want to go ahead. Brother Stephen Johnson proposed a project that was unanimously approved to start doing modding water kiosks. Not hand pump, faucets. We're faucets. We just hook it up to the, the water lines, you know, and, and, and the community building in a community to service hundreds of people per water kiosk all over the place. 
These are the things that we're engaged in. We're not just talking, 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 talking. We're doing things to actually touch the people's lives in meaningful, practical, and tangible ways. That's what we're doing. So uh, we're very impressed. Yesterday, as I sat wa and, and watched Brother Yobo uh, here in the U.S. do the uh, press conference, and uh, I was very, very proud. I was just smiling. Simo, 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 man. I was very proud of our SG, and not only me, uh, uh, all the other guys, Ben Sanvi reached out to say how proud he was of, uh, of Brother Yobo's presentation. It was beautiful. The rest, the, rest, the rest of the guys. So we are building a strong institution here. A very, thank you very much. Uh, Brother, Brother Yobo reached out to our lawyer, our lead lawyer, Councillor Finley F. Kanga, because we need to now go to the court and get a court order. They said before they get our job, we are assets. We will go to court and get court order. That is what Madam Yusuf Gay said. Now, I have the letter here that Madam Yusuf Gay wrote. I think I should read a letter to you. Uh, Secretary General Yobo, can you kindly send me that letter quickly? I know it's somewhere in our chat room here, but I want to, for easy references. Okay, I have it. Thank you. So I have the letter here that Madam Yusuf S. Gay wrote to us, the Auditor General of the GAC. And we wrote using our duly registered organization called um, the National Democratic Front. It's registered and owned by the COP. So that is the organization that we used to write to the, to the Auditor General to demand the release to us of George Weir's assets as were declared. So this is her reply that she wrote to us. September 17, 2020, Mr. Henry P. Costa, Chairman, National Democratic Front, corner of Lynch and Kerry Streets, Monroe River, Liberia. Dear Mr. Costa, the, of course, the reference of this letter is request for information on President George Minor Weir's declared assets of Wednesday, July 25, 2018, Pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Compliments. I'm reading her letter to us. The, audit, the, the General Auditing Commission, GAC, hereby acknowledges receipt of your application for information and records on assets of the President, His Excellency George Manewia, which he declared with the Commission dated September 7, 2020. Mr. Costa, as you may be aware, the 2014 Act prescribing the National Code of Conduct for all public officials and employees, which makes the GAC a repository for declaration of assets by public officials and employees within the executive branch of government, does not require the Commission to publish such documents or declarations. Moreover, Section 10.2 of the Act, prescribing the National Code of Conduct for all public officials and employees, only grants such access to the general public upon a court order. We regret, therefore, our restriction by law to grant you access in the absence of a court order. Kind regards, as we strive to promote accountability, transparency, fiscal probity, and good governance across the government of Liberia. Sincerely, Yusido S. Gay, Auditor General, Republic of Liberia. Now, Yusido Gay quotes the law to us. She says, we're not refusing to give you George Weir's assets. But 10.2 of the law states we can only release the assets upon a court order. So what the, well, so the COP said, oh, but not nothing. We got, we got a court. So as chairman, I instructed our secretary general with immediate effect, call our lawyer, Councillor Finley F. Kanga, have him draft uh, a request to the court for a court order to release the document to us. Guess what? Uh, Secretary General Yobo has already communicated with our lawyer. That request will be, that document will be drafted by the lawyer during the course of this weekend, hopefully completed by, by Monday or Tuesday of next week, and it will be filed before the court, the appropriate court, requesting a court order in order to have the GAC release or furnish unto us George Weir's declared assets. You know, George Weir has been hiding his assets. And we all know George Weir is broke because in 2014, when he ran for the Senate, he declared assets with the Elections Commission. I haven't. I have published it before. He said he only had $50,000 in his bank account at Chase Manhattan Bank. 50000 US dollars. I don't even believe he had $50,000. But that's what he said. But from $50,000 in 2014 in his bank account when he ran for the Senate and his property value 
He put all his property, all his properties in America and Liberia, he put it at two point something million. So how is it that he's massively acquiring properties all over the place? Where is he getting the money from? Did he win the lottery that we don't know about? Did he make some, uh, did he find diamond? Did he find a hundred carat diamond somewhere? We don't, we, don't, we don't know about. So we want to see what his assets look like. He's hiding something. Because when we see his assets, then we'll get to understand fully that clearly the brother is stealing. We know he's stealing, but we just want to expose that. Hence, the rationale of the French man will say raison d'etre behind our decision to write the GAC requesting that his assets as declared be, 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 be given to us. And so our Secretary General, Mr. Mo, Mr. Yoba, is working on that with our lawyer, Councillor Finlay Kanga. We're going to be sending that communication to the court, requesting the court. Now the court will have to say why they can't give us, why they can't issue the order. Now you see, it's going to fall on the, on the court. The court now would have to decide that they are denying us the court order to get his assets. Now, it is not the discretion of the court. The law states that the assets should be furnished to a citizen when requested by and through the legal process. So, the, the judge does not have the discretion. It is not the judge's prerogative to deny us the court order or not. It is not the judge's place. It is not his place. So, when we submit that document to the court, requesting the court to issue unto us a, an order, the judge will now be the one under the COP pressure. Because you will have to give us reasons if you deny us the court order. Why you deny us the court order? So the judge will have to decide. Do I do what is right? Which is grant the court order as is or as will be requested by us hopefully in the coming week or not if the judge refused to grant us what the judge cannot by law decide what or not to do it's a perfunctory process it should happen with automaticity which means once we apply for it the judge must automatically without any kind of hesitation or reluctance issue it grant it it that, that, that that's the law I not the judge's business to decide what to do, what not to do. The judge is mandated to give it when requested for. So, when we request for it, then we turn the bazooka to the court. Bangang, we are waiting for you, Mr. Your Honor. <laughs> I don't know whether they can call them Mr. M M M Mr. Your Honor or Madam Your Honor. We are we're, we're waiting for you. That is what we are going to do. And so, now, John, yeah, he, he will be worried. He'll be worried. He will be worried because if we lay hands on his assets, he's gonna be he's he's gonna be in trouble. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So, folks, again, I want to close this video. I have some papers to write. I have a, a I, I have a May term to do online. I'm about to go and get it done. And so I just want to say this. Uh, I'm glad that the CPP has resolved this matter. Uh, this crisis that grew out of the uh, contentious and, and uncivilry primary process that happened in NIMBA. I'm glad that it is behind us. I'm glad that Mr. Cummings decided to act as a leader uh, to let this slide. And, uh, and, and, and in polit politics, there will always be moments when you have to make compromises. It doesn't mean you're weak. Uh, compromises uh, have to happen sometimes in order for you to ingratiate yourself with your colleagues or your partners in an alliance or a coalition as this one because you might always need to you know to uh, tap in, into that you might need to leverage it and when you ingratiate yourself with people then you come calling and you might need to tap into that so I think it was a good decision in the interest of the ANC to you know let this slide because three parties voted for Edith so no matter how you turn it Edith would still win that it did not matter uh and I want to say it again to reiterate what I earlier said to my brother Tha a word of caution a word of no not caution but a word of admonishment and encouragement brother Tha Wangwe you are a young man with a bright future uh I think you should not as I have been told by some people who that you might be considering running independent. Do not do that. Uh, you signed a pledge before the primary to not run independent, to accept the result of the primary 
after the primary. Yes, the primary may have been a little troublesome, yes, but three parties did vote. Uh, so I think you must stick to that and uh, show political maturity and political magnanimity in this particular case because it might come in very handy in the near future when you choose to run again, which I know you will do and you must do. And I encourage you to do that. You are a fine young, young man. And uh, so to Edith Gonglo, where you have been endorsed by all four parties of the CPP, I think you yourself must do the magnanimous thing to reach out to Brother Ta Wong, but show grace and magnanimity. Reach out to your young brother Ta. Ta has his supporters in Nimba, and you will need him to a fuse. You will need a fusion of, 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 of uh, CPP support in Nimba. Work with Ta, the infrastructure he built in Nimba. You need that to help make your case stronger, to help you know uh, uh, increase your chances in, in, in Nimba. So you should do that. To so our political leaders, all four of you, I've got nothing but tremendous respect for all of you, and I would like to reiterate, I'm not doing this because I want you, when you win, to give me a little job. No, that's not what I want. That's not my ambition, to get a job in the, in the, in the government. But I'm doing this because of Liberia. And as long as you stay the cause and you do what's right and you stand up when you should and you can amicably resolve your issues when they arise, which they all, you know, which will always happen as is an integral part of human existence and human interactions, uh, you must learn to fix these issues as amicably as possible and as quietly as possible so that we avoid having these spillovers and, and into the public sphere which I must say uh, is very embarrassing because we would like to project ourselves as being better, more civilized people than the hoodlums and the talks in that political court organization called the CDC. And so we cannot, we cannot do anything that would bring us to the level where we are, they are equals. No way, we must stay above those talks and those hoodlums and we are better than them. And so we must do that, continuing to lead by example and mirror the things, the, the values and principles we espouse, and 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 that is what we must we we must we must we must do. And uh, so I just want to say that. And uh, um, uh, what else do I want to say? Of course, you want to send money to Liberia. How else? How else should you do it? Send wave. What are you waiting for? Yes, yesterday alone I sent money to several people using send wave. How convenient. I mean, I was happy, by how fast, by how cheap but how secure it is, and the recipients were also equally happy that in 30 seconds, they were able to receive their money directly in their Lone Star Cell mobile money accounts. What a wonderful way to send money. So download the Sendway app now, in your, in your Google Play Store or your Apple Store, set it up a few simple steps, and don't forget to get free $5. Just use the name Costa, just, just Costa. Yeah, I just put Costa, C-O-S-T-A. It will ask you, got promo code? Of course you got promo code. Enter Costa as a first-time user. Costa will give you $5. Can you imagine the name Costa is worth five, five dollars Even if you're 10,000 people, you will still get five, five, five dollars That is amazing. 100,000 people download the app, you will get $5. Costa. Just say Costa. You get five bucks. Thank you very much, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful, blessed weekend. And I'm going to go now and do my tests and do my exams and whatever. God, God, God bless you. Stay safe. The COP, the CPP, we're strong and we're getting stronger. And it's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.